Hello and welcome to this video where I will go into probably the most dramatic game that I have ever watched live in chess. If you're not massively into chess, usually you don't watch four, five, six hour games, but this one had a lot of drama, a lot of intrigue till the end about who is going to win. So I'm really excited to cover it. It features Nurgyu Salimova, whose tournament I've been following pretty much every game on this channel and also I've been very excited for her as the youngest and lowest rated player to see how she's going to really challenge the big guns in women's chess. She's playing here Vaishali Ramesh Babo, um, second lowest rated, but both players have really had amazing games during the tournament and they've shown the big guns that there's, you know, they don't have anything on them. So let's dive into the game and see why I'm saying it is, it was really dramatic. Um, bit of foreshadowing, nothing much happens until move 42. So this is the ironic bit that we have uh, a very solid start of the game of both players. We have what's called the Grunfeld defense, even though in probably not the most popular line, but still a very solid opening for black pieces where uh, players just develop and there is no immediate chances, even though Nurgyu opens with a very direct kingside attack against the castle king on the kingside of Vaishali. So we see basically a bunch of moves that uh, exchange pieces and so far things look very peaceful, look very much like there isn't an obvious way where uh, attacks will come from either side. The game is open, means the center is not blocked by pawns, so having the big pieces uh, does not allow for any major threats on either side. But uh, as the game develops, we'll see what the plans of the two players are. Currently, Nurgyu is the one that is slightly more into space, into more ability to attack, whereas Vaishali just has a strong position. And we have further development, which uh, led Vaishali to make an inaccuracy and here miss an opportunity to defend even better with something like knight to h5, kicking the queen and uh, allowing a bit more breathing room for her king. But in any case, here still nothing is decisive and we're already at move 20 and I really thought at this point and uh, luckily when you follow a game like this from the candidates you have eight other games to check in i really thought nothing much will happen in this game unless one of the two players goes into time trouble on the left hand side you can see the times they had left at each move but i've purposefully hidden the result because if you don't know uh how the game ends you probably are not going to know until the very very last few moves um so let's keep going um I mean, the title of the video might give you some idea. Right, let's get back to the game. We have queens being exchanged, so the draw is even looking ever more likely, but exactly what's going to happen remains to be seen. And now Nurgyu really makes some moves that keep the game equal, but I would have white pieces anytime in this position, having a bishop on a very open board and also having more attacking chances with a pawn that's already passed, quite a solid structure, and just more attacking ideas. The rook is slightly more active, the king is in the center. Overall, white has small advantages that if black makes, basically to summarize it, if white makes a few inaccurate moves, black's not gonna win. But if black makes a few inaccurate moves, things are gonna go really bad. So let's see what happens. Again, we're around move 30 here. So we're getting closer to when really the fireworks start. Um, and here is the first mistake of the game. So here Vaishali should just capture the pawn, which she can do, but understandably staring at this pawn on d6, here the analysis really begins to be a bit more in depth, staring at this pawn on d6 uh, and getting closer to queening with the support of the rook and for uh, the d7 square of the bishop is quite threatening. So probably Vaishali thought, I don't have time to play this move because if she did, maybe bishop will jump to e8, cutting off the rook from being able to uh, protect from the pawn turning into a queen. So in any case, she played the move rook to c8 to be on the right side of the pawn compared to potential bishop move to e8. And Nurgyu retreats to b5, locking up the bishop and pawn together in a very strong combo that will be very difficult for Vaishali to dislodge. Um, and we have here rook checking the king and king going to g1. So how to make progress here? We have... Uh, King going to g2 and now uh, Vaishali moves knight to e8 in attempts to, uh, to cover the square and also to just block the pawn's uh, movement and also to allow knight to jump to eventually when things hopefully for Vaishali calm down to a square like c5 which will be a very very powerful square for this knight. Also she allows the king to jump into its old place 
Uh, so this move is really neat defensive move, even though it doesn't look very nice to put your knight all the way to the back. We've got pawn to d7, which computer says is a little bit premature. Um, and the game is completely equal. So what to do? And what, uh, uh, yeah, currently still nothing, nothing can happen. But now a move like king to e7, it's not that in it itself is um, a bad move. Ob the obvious defensive ideas of the move are there, but it just gives Nurgul a free move basically because it doesn't do anything. It doesn't alter what Nurgul will play if she had a free move. So now Nurgul gets a free move. And this is our viewer challenge for this video. Please pause the video and find the best move for white, knowing that you will not find it. All right. Well, if you found the best move in the position, I owe you my sincere apologies because when I saw it live, I just uh, couldn't believe it at first. And then after seeing it with the computer and uh, understanding its idea, I'm like, yeah, that's an obvious move. But in any case, the best move here, for example, I consider the move like rook to uh, uh, bishop to f1. <coughs> Sorry, to cut off, add some defense to not allow constant checking, maybe go here, etc. Which the computer kind of likes, but not nearly at this evaluation of 2.3. That would be a move that the computer gives 0.7 advantage to white. So second best move and definitely not as good as what you will see. So when you're looking for good moves, unlike Vaishali's last move, which does one thing, defend one square. Um... Nurgil's next move does a lot of things. And the move is... King to h2. Sorry for the long intro to that move, but I just couldn't believe that move and the computer loves it. And why does it do that? So, compared to going more attacking, we need to see why this is a good move by also seeing why some other good-looking moves don't work. So, going here would make more sense because that's what you ultimately want to do with this king is attack and pick up all the pawns. But going here right away runs into an immediate check and you can't really keep going forward because you keep getting checked between g and h file from the rook and you or you lose this pawn on h4 so you can't move forward with the king uh, other moves also don't make so much sense with the rook like you can go here but then this is just going to lead to some repetitions or something like that so again not very good ideas but this move is really good actually it's not just an average move because okay it prevents being checked from here but even more crucially, it allows the rook to start doing some real damage. So this is the idea that I absolutely missed during the game, that freeing up g2, sometimes you need to just move a piece to free up a piece for something else that needs to go in it and really become really dangerous. So Nurgil found that move. And when she found that move, I honestly thought she's calculated the whole thing till the end because this was the tricky move to find. And Vaishali plays rook to uh, c5. Looks like a mistake, but I think she just knows that the attack is going to be really strong and that she will have to, at some point, sacrifice the rook for the bishop and hope for a draw by doing some damage. If you sacrifice rook for bishop and the rook is not defending the pawn, you gain one pawn and one bishop for the rook and hope that you'll survive with your knight and pawns into an endgame that you're clearly worse. So this is the reason why she played this move. Probably better would have been to play rook to um, c3, not c5. Because controlling this file, uh, the third file here is uh, also important. You might be able to pick up a free pawn, etc. But in any case, defensive move by Vaishali. And Nurgil starts playing all the correct moves like a computer. Also very fast, attacking with h5, freeing up the g file for the rook. Everything is going great at the moment. She's finding move after move. That's the only move to be found. Again, saving her pawn here on d7. So much pressure. And the yeah the engine is loving it it's saying plus six plus five after every move things are becoming more obvious and like nurgil all she needs to do is play a move to take the rook to the back file oops that is not how rooks move take the move to uh, take the rook to h8 threaten checkmate which is going to be checkmate in one move potentially and um the knight will have to go here otherwise we'll have checkmating uh, threats if the king comes here and covers the square so in the meantime of course the pawn will move forward but we have e5 and everything goes to a draw because if you remember earlier what we really want to achieve with rook to h8 or some other moves uh, is to not forget that this knight looks extremely far from the game here but it can move to the best square for the knight in the game c5 and this is what e5 allows yes you're protecting your pawn with the king here but the knight can jump in here. Only move to save the game. And it's really saving the game from plus 6, which is basically a dead loss, 
to a draw and Vaishali patiently waiting for a chance to get back into the game does get back into the game we have now rook to uh, h7 protecting her pawn and we have all of a sudden a runner to become a queen which was not a threat before because Nurgil was obviously going to queen faster but now things are more in the balance so one more thing for white to look at as it attacks its attack really starts to fizzle out since she needs to put some resources to defending we have rook to e7 here and uh, f2 so now Nurgil is a bit out of moves she plays a clever move king to f7 note that here uh, queening is not really an option because at the moment uh, the bishop is guarding the square so at least Nurgil has something going for that but uh, at the same time this bishop might be needed in the attack and is currently having a main job of preventing a loss in the game and now Vaishali decides to give Nurgil one last chance Rook moves back, uh, sorry, Knight moves back to uh, B7. I'm not sure what she saw and why she wanted to go there. I'm not sure if Nurgil plays a move that she expected uh, what would be the reason. Or maybe she set a trap. A trap that Nurgil, unfortunately, in time trouble, she has 56 seconds here. So it's not a surprise she didn't play the best move. The best move being, again, putting your Rook at the back. It doesn't matter that you can get checked because the pawns are connected and supporting each other. So rook checking the king would just result in the king moving somewhere and you're still winning. So again, play e8, play here, kick out the king, make a queen. If some bigger mistake happens, takes a piece. But Norgul sees that if she moves and makes a queen, she can win the knight. So that's what she does. And she makes a queen. Obviously white has only moved capturing the queen and now Nurgil is going to not capture the knight because in the last moment she had 30 seconds but she saw that's a for sure loss uh, because she would currently lose the rook so I don't know when exactly she saw that the only reason she made the queen is to capture the knight but she saw that that's a terrible idea and it's better to draw the game than lose it on the spot so as she grabs her rook she doesn't capture the knight thank god she gives a check and the game continues as a draw and now really the game is a draw unfortunately after all this drama because um, basically both uh, both players have enough arsenal to attack the king endlessly and uh, not enough arsenal to make a winning attack so we have repeats and the game went in a draw hang on Nurgil refuses she repeats twice, but on the third time she's like, I don't care, I'll play a move that puts Vaishali in the lead. I will not draw against her. So now the game continues and gets another lease of life on move 66. We have a position that all of a sudden Black is starting to be playing better. And from here on, Nurgil probably extremely frustrated and all the variations in her head, how she must have been winning. She knows she's blundered a big chance, starts to make mistake after mistake. And in only three moves, we have a draw guaranteed draw if she just plays king to g5 to a slight disadvantage a bigger disadvantage a loss and basically from here on Vaishali cannot mess up this game of course Nurgil puts up a fight because theoretically in some positions if you're only one pawn down with rooks you can easily draw but this is not such a position because her king is completely cut off from this pawn and also even completely cut off from defending its own pawn. So the price of a pawn for Nurgul, unfortunately, will be a rook. And it's too expensive a price to pay. Because her pawn is just not close enough to queening. So after a few moves, we see that uh, Vaishali is going to win that pawn. And win the break. We win the game. What a heartbreak for Nurgul. Uh, what a heartbreak for me watching this at 3 a.m. But I am extremely impressed that she declined the draw. This is a tournament that you play first of all to win. And Nurgul had four points. If she had won and become on five points, she was going to be not far from first place, actually, given how the other results went. So that was her one and only chance this game to make some outside challenge to first place and she decided to risk it which is fair enough unfortunately instead of that she is now only staying on four points again out of uh, 10 games so she's more towards the bottom half of the table but in the in in the end i think that she should be proud of herself what a powerful attack just one move from literally vaishali resigning i guess she would have resigned if rook played uh, if nurgil played rook to h8 but Instead, we have a comeback 
and a nicely played endgame from Vaishali. Credit to her for su being such a fighter and really not not giving Nurgul any chances in the end game for drawing. So that's it. What a game. What a long game with so many twists and turns. Took ages to uh, ramp up the action. But amazing to see such a dramatic game after a very quiet 40 <laughs> moves or so at the beginning. Right, let me know what you thought. I'm guessing if I have any Indian viewers, they'll be very happy because this was a hard-fought victory by Vaishali. And see you in the next round. There's still four more games, so wishing Nurgul all the best. Thank you and goodbye.